Hi, I'm Jeff, the window expert. I'm so glad you've tuned in today. I want to talk to you about the difference between flood-filled argon gas in an insulated glass unit, that's a mouthful, versus what we call poke and fill. Okay, so Jeff, what the heck are we talking about? Okay, so let me back up for a minute. When you buy a double pane window and it comes with double pane glass, as you can see here, you have an outside pane, you have an inside pane, and then you have a spacer. This is the spacer that holds those two pieces of glass separated from each other. It needs to be deep enough to be able to hold some kind of a gas. Usually we put gas in here. It could be krypton gas, which no one does anymore. It's way too expensive. Or we do argon gas. Argon gas is really good stuff. It's six times thicker than air, so it helps prevent sound. It helps prevent transfer of heat and cold. It helps prevent condensation on the window. It's really invisible insulation is a word I like to use. So this is a double pane unit. Now there's two ways to get the argon gas inside of here. I say, Jeff, uh, you telling me that not all glass is equal? Well, what I'm saying is you might have glass that's equal because I'm gonna show you the difference between these two units. These are both using cardinal glass. And you've heard me talk about cardinal glass, how cardinal glass is really the best in the industry. But even within cardinal glass, you're gonna have different tiers of effectiveness, different energy components. So this is a unit that was made in-house at a window manufacturer's facility. If you notice here, they poke the top and then they fill it with the argon from the top. So I'm gonna get you a close up of this, but I call this a little poke nipple right here at the top. And you see it sticks down in there. Essentially what they're doing is they have this argon poker, they poke it down in there, they fill it with gas, they let it sit in here until it overflows with gas, they pull it out. And then as you can see here, they put a little patch on top. That little plug you saw in there, that little nipple I was telling you about, that plugs a hole where the argon was filled. And then they put this sealant on top. And then this goes down the line. And this could have anywhere between 50% and 99% argon fill. There's no real scientific measurement for argon when it's assembled this way. And you say, well, Jeff, what's the other way to do it? That's, I thought that was the only way to do it. Well, there's another way to do it. And this is an example of that. Now, if you look at this one, I'm going to show you a close-up. This does not have a poke and fill nipple on top. You see there's a little tiny seam, looks like a little stitching seam, where all of the spacer comes together at the end. And I say, Jeff, well, what's the difference? Well, essentially, they take the same two panes of glass, but instead of handling them with human hands, and instead of filling them with air and later putting in the argon, it actually goes into an argon component, a chamber, if you will, that is flood filled with argon. The whole unit is filled with argon, and then the windows put together. So imagine, okay, imagine that you and I were going to fill these up with water. This one would have been filled out side of the swimming pool, and then I would have poked a hole in it and I would have poured water in it. Imagine if I swam underwater, wore my little scuba suit, don't laugh, and I took this unassembled and I assembled it while I was underwater. How much more water do you think this thing would hold than this one that started full of air? Obviously this one would. So you say, well, Jeff, is that really the only benefit? I get more argon gas? Well, that's not the only benefit. There's actually more benefits. One of the other benefits is, since there was no moisture, no air to begin with, there's less moisture to begin with because all air contains moisture. And what is the enemy to a sealed unit? Contamination with moisture. So take a look at this. This is a cutaway of a unit like this one right here. From the side, you can see that this is the spacer, and there's that black spacer like I showed you in the close-up of that one, okay? And we just cut this down the middle so you can see what it looks like. You see all those little pellets right there? Those little, little beads right there? You know what that is? That's actually silica. Now, if you've ever opened a bottle of aspirin or medication, you have that little packet in there, you know, that says do not eat, right? It's made out of similar material. So even though this is flood filled. We know there's still a tiny percent amount of actual moisture that might be in the air. And what this does is this absorbs any remaining moisture once the window's completely sealed. 
so that none of it can contaminate the surface of your glass. So you say, well, which one's going to be better, Jeff? Well, this is going to be better. Now, it's going to be a little more costly. You say, why would it be more costly? Isn't it the same glass? Well, it is the same glass. But if you assemble a complete glass unit with argon space in the middle versus sheets of glass being transported from the cardinal glass to the plant where the window's being made, you're going to get a lot more glass on a glass truck than you would get glass on a window truck. So there's more freight involved. There's more processes involved, but ultimately it's a better performing unit. The reason it's better performing is these units are nine times less likely to have a seal failure, historically speaking, than a unit like this. So when somebody says, hey, I got a quote for double pane windows, why is your window more costly than this window? Well, because it might be a better glass unit. Could be better made, could have a better warranty could last a lot longer and you're going to be much happier. So you say, Jeff, wow, why do you know so much about windows? Well, because I'm a nerd, a little bit of a geek. I'm the window expert. I started the window experts in Houston, Texas in 2011. We've expanded to Dallas, Fort Worth, expanding into other markets, maybe one near you. And we'd love to help you with your window project. Now, if you don't live in that area and you're looking for a great window company, I get requests like this so much, I started a website. It's called jeffslist.com. Go to jeffslist.com, find a great window company near you. They're gonna know a lot about glass. They're gonna help you find the right glass and the right window for your home. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe. I'll talk to you again real soon.